We're going to take a look uh, now at a new idea in Chapter 16, and it's an idea of what we call expected value. So suppose we're, uh, we have a game set up here, and as it says on the screen here that you're rolling a six-sided die. Well, it, the game works like this. If you get a one, two, or three, you're going to win nothing. But if you get a four or five, you're going to win $30. And if you get a six, you're going to get the big jackpot of 150 bucks. So the question is, how much would you win on average, and what is the standard deviation? And this average we call actually expected value. How much do you expect to win on average? So really there's two issues at play here. Number one is what you're actually going to win each time, which is either 0, 30, or 150. And then also what's the chance of each outcome happening? So I've already made a little chart down here. So you're either going to get $0, $30, or 150. And the chance of that happening, that's three ways out of six. So it would be 3 out of 6, which is half the time, and 4 out of 5 would be 2 out of 6. And then finally, uh, a 6 would be one way out of the 6 side, so that would be 1 over 6 here. But we write it a little differently when we talk about expected value. We talk about what's called a probability model here. And so um, you'll notice here in the no notation, this first line says, hey, the chance, if you, if you want to pay out of $0, we write it like this, the probability that we actually get a payout of zero dollars is three out of six or one half. Same thing over here. The chance of getting thirty dollars, a payout of thirty dollars is two out of six, and the chance of getting a payout of one hundred and fifty dollars is one out of six. And you'll notice this notation over here where it says x equals. And what would that be is x is this in this case here is the dollars that you win. So we would define this as dollars one. And then the little x means, hey, it's just the amount you would actually win. So we say this means the dollars one equals how much it actually is. So that's why you see capital X here, which is dollars one equals the amount of dollars one. So it's just a little quirky way of, of writing what we intuitively already know. But that's basically the setup here. Is there's three things that can happen, and we have to account for their probabilities. So based on that, I've gone ahead and just written the same exact table over here. So we have our three payouts, and our probability model says half the time you're going to get nothing, a third of the time, which is two out of six, you're going to get thirty dollars, and the sixth of the time you're going to get at one fifty. So how do we calculate what we call once again expected value? So you can see here as I write out the words expected value, it's kind of a long thing here. So what we would say is x is dollars one. And so if we wanted to go ahead and actually find the expected values dollars one, we would say this. This is the shorthand notation. The expected value of dollars one is, and all we do is it's a very simple calculation. We take each payout, so our first payout is no dollars, and we multiply it by the chance of it occurring. So it'd be zero times a half. Now the next one is thirty dollars, so we say plus thirty dollars, and the chance of that happening is one third of the time. Now the next thing that can happen is $150, so we add that on and we multiply it by its probability. So if you were to grab your calculator right now and take 0 times a half plus 30 times 1 third and finally plus 150 times 1 six, you're going to wind up with $35. So that's what we would call how much you would expect to win on average. And notice, do you ever win $35 exactly? Well no, we win either 0, 30, or 150. But if you were playing this game hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times, you would win on average $35. Now, to find the standard deviation, we're going to do what's called the variance first. And the variance we abbreviate with var and then the x. And how this works is, we're going to look at the difference between each of these three payouts over here and what the actual average was. So we know our average is $35 here, and these are the respective payouts here. So what we do is, let's take a look at the first one here. Zero is our payout, and our average is 35. So what's the difference between 35 and zero? Well, obviously that difference is 35. And you take that difference and square it, and then you multiply it by the probability of that happening. And that was uh, 1 half, so we're going to multiply it by a half. Then we do that again between the next payout. What's the difference between 30 and 35? Well, the difference between 35 and 30 is 5 squared. Multiply by its probability, which is one third, and then finally the last one is 150. So what's the difference between 150 and 35? Well, if you take 150, you subtract 35, you would get 115, and you square it. Multiply by its probability. So once again, this number right here in front comes from the difference between the payout 
and the average that you calculate first. So 35 minus 0 is 35, 35 minus 30 is 5, and then finally 150 minus 35 is 115. So you grab your calculator once again and take 35 squared times 1 half, continue and do all the work there. And uh, when you grab your calculator and do that, you should get an answer of 2,825. So we call this the variance. And all you do now to find the standard deviation is, you basically, all you got to do is square root whatever the variance is. So grab your calculator and square root $2,825. And when you do that, you're going to get about $53.15. So we call this the standard deviation. So once again, that's our expected value. That's what we're going to win on average. And this is how much variability we have. Typically, you're going to be you know, within about $53 of that. So it's a, it's a pretty big range here of variability here, but that will be what we call our standard deviation here. And you always do the variance first, take your answer, square rooted, and that gives you the standard deviation. So that's the basics on how expected value works.